is Chen Mai Word for Digital Nomad. Hi everyone, my name is Sara and today we're gonna focus on the amazing Chen Mai, which is a village situated in the north part of Thailand. And we're gonna discover if it's a good destination for digital nomad based on different reasons, from where to stay, where to eat, the nightlife, the digital nomad community, and much more. And at the end, we will see an overview of the monthly cost of living. So if you're ready, let's go. First things first, the best area to stay. Niman Emin Road is a very popular among a digital nomad due to the proximity to co-working space and the nightlife of the city. In fact, I spent one month here and I really, really enjoy it, not only for the nightlife and co-working spaces, but as well for the multiple cafe, restaurant, the general vibe of the place and a lot of beer gardens all around to meet up with other people. I really, really enjoy Niman and I totally recommend it, but there are also other districts that you can stay in. For instance, the old city or Santitam, but I haven't tried it myself, so I can't really review, but I know that many people decide also to stay there. Generally talking, Chiang Mai is very well furnished in terms of apartment and place to stay. In fact, you shouldn't really have problem to find a place, but in case, you can always check on Airbnb or Booking.com. But my experience when it comes about looking for apartment or flat, Airbnb is my first place to go because I usually book for one plus months and like this I also receive a big discount from the host. I don't know if it always worked but to me it always did so I recommend it. Second, how to move around. There are different ways to move around the Chiang Mai. One of them is by downloading the app Grab, which works exactly the same as Uber. You pin the place that you are and you pin the place that you want to go and a cab will come to pick you up. Another good thing about Grab is that you can order food at your place. So for instance, if you have to finish a project or you have things to do at home, you can also avoid going out looking for a restaurant, but just order food to come to your place or you know you save a lot of time. If you're more adventurous you can also jump on some local van. They have a specific name I can't remember I will just leave it down here but basically with 30 baht you just jump on them and they do multiple stops around the city so if you know those stop you can just jump on the bus pay those 30 baht and just drop off when you want to go down. Because it's not huge Chiang Mai doesn't offer a metro transportation but if you feel adventurous and you have your international driving license because you need it to drive around the Thailand, you can also rent your own scooter and be independent to move everywhere you want to go. And I will also say that Chiang Mai is very safe to drive. Honestly, I'm impressed by how people drive in Thailand. It's very organized. Well, after one year and a half uh, driving in Bali, I felt completely safe driving in Thailand as well. Chiang Mai is only a few hours away from Chiang Rai, which is another small town which host a lot of incredible temples, some of the most famous of Thailand, I guess. For instance, there is the Stunning White Temple, the Blue Temple, the incredible big Buddha that I definitely recommend you check her out. It's only two hours away from the Hippie Pai and eight hours away from my beloved Bangkok. Plus, Chiang Mai also offer a super functional airport so you can catch a plane if you want to reach places faster. Third for my foodies, where to eat? So Chiang Mai is based on the north side of Thailand and as the north side they offer some incredible and typical food from the north. For instance, my favorite Thai food, Khao Soi, which is basically a soup with some noodles and some crunchy cracker inside, spiced up with so many types of flavor and oh, I just love it and you definitely have to give it a try. And if you want to try a really, really good Khao Soi, you have to go to Niman at the Khao Soi Niman, which is a restaurant with a Michelin star. Plus, they also do an amazing satay chicken. 100% delicious. If you're looking for a great place for breakfast and maybe just sit down to do some work at your laptop, I definitely recommend it to, again, go into the Niman area and try it out in my favorite cafes. One is On The Bread, which offer multiple sets of breakfast, which are delicious and they offer such a cozy area to stay in. The other one is Rosemary, which has a great delicious breakfast as well and it offers one of the fastest Wi-Fi ever. If you're looking for something more favorite and you like ramen, Ninja Ramen is your place. It offers an incredible, flavorful and super affordable ramen compared to other places I went to and it's just right next to 
Brownie Yesib, which is a small shop that sells multiple different types of brownies of different flavors, and they are amazing, really. My favorite was, of course, Nutella. Niman area is not the only place with incredible food. I definitely recommend you to also head to the old city and try out the delicious local food of a Good Kitchen or of Cat's Kitchen or the incredible pizza at the restaurant La Fontana. Chiang Mai offers so many different types of food, but the icing on the cake of Thailand culture is that they always have street food market, which is always recommend, both for small bites and also for full meals. Another option is to head to Maya Mall, which offers at the top floor an amazing food court with incredible and super affordable local dishes. Point four for my digital nomad, the co-working spaces. When it comes to co-working spaces, Chiang Mai is super, super well furnished. In fact, it's also one of the biggest digital nomad hub of Thailand. And of course, myself had to have go around the city and try out all of them. And here are some reviews. First, we have the co-working collab, which was an amazing discovery after we left the co-working camp that we will talk about it later. It's a super new place that I didn't even found on Google Maps yet I just was walking on the street and I found myself in front of it. So I decided to give it a try and it was such a great idea because it has a very high fast internet, it even has a small kitchen and it's based on multiple floors. It's open 24-7 and it offers a daily pass of 250 baht, which is like $7 with a drink included, but you can only stay until 6 p.m. Otherwise, it has the weekly pass, which is 1,500 baht, which is about $43, and you also have access 24-7. The monthly pass is 2,990 baht, which is $86. I really enjoyed the design and the fast Wi-Fi and I totally recommend it. Second co-working on the list, we have the Brick, which is also located in the Niman area. It's a pretty large co-working space, I will say, and it really gives like focus vibe. And it also has those desks that you can push the button and they go up and down, I don't know how to say in English. It also has a kitchen where you can eat your lunch and also meeting rooms. And if you need your morning coffee, right next to the brick, there is a stop and coffee where you can get your morning coffee. I didn't know this before, but when I arrived at the Brick, the receptionist told me that this co-working space was created and founded by the Science and Technology Park University of Chiang Mai, and it was built a startup space for the brilliant minds out there, which is such an amazing idea. The daily pass is 250 baht, so $7. The weekly pass is 1,500, $43, and the monthly is 2,500, $72. I cannot do this video without talking about a yellow co-working space, which is probably the most famous co-working space in Chiang Mai. In fact, it is uh, super well designed and when I went there it was really crowded with a lot of people and I definitely recommend it to check it out. It's always based in Iman area. I really enjoy it because it has a huge outdoor area as well and you can also go inside and on the first floor basically it has a coffee area where you can get your coffee, it has more kind of um, if you want a lobby, a chill one where you can also get your coffee, your teas and then it has all the work uh, uh, room where you can just work and then you can go upstairs and it has also another chill area with a really really cool uh, rope floor basically you can sit on it and just see the floor below and it's just cool i really like the design the daily pass at yellow from 9 a.m until 6 p.m is 289 baht which is around eight dollar the weekly pass is 1290 baht with 24 7 access and is about 37 dollar and the monthly pass is 3290 baht which is around 95 dollars there are also a lot of other popular co-working space options. For instance, Pan Space, which is in the old town area surrounded by a lovely relaxing park where you can chill on the hammock. There is Camp, which is a free coffee co-working space created especially for students, and you can find this inside the Maya Mall. And Buri City, which is more an hotel with also a very nice pool that offers the dining space of co-working as well. For my night alls, let's talk about nightlife. And Chiang Mai has options. 
Even though Chiang Mai is known for its temple and for the stronger northern culture, it's still a city with such a vibrant vibes and a lot of market to choose from. My favorite was the Sunday night market, where the wall Ratchman Chow Main Road, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it, was transformed into a huge street market. It is full of food, clothes, handcraft, and musicians playing everywhere. There are also so many bars and beer gardens that I didn't expect them at all, but it seems to be such a big social thing in Chiang Mai about uh, beer garden. As well also as clubs, uh, for instance, the Spicy, which I recommend, and I had an amazing night out with Laura, Finn and Ryan, shout out to them. There are also other street food uh, markets that are open every day, for instance, the Night Bazaar, or you can go to Maya Mall and enjoy a cinema night if it's something that you might like to do. Six activities. Chiang Mai has a lot of activities to do. For instance, only in the city, there are more than 100 temples to visit and most of them are free. And apparently Chiang Mai is also very famous for making handmade suits and dresses. In fact, Ryan got his own suits for an upcoming wedding and it looks so sexy in it. As said, Chiang Mai has a lot of night market. My favorite is the Sunday night market and you definitely have to check it out. The good things about this night market is that it's huge, incredibly huge. It's like two streets crossing each other and like from point A to point B, it literally took me 30 minutes to walk. So this is to realize how huge it is. Basically, it crossed into direction the whole, whole the city. But also the surrounding area of Chiang Mai has a lot to offer. For instance, there are a lot of tracks and also Elephant Sanctuary I haven't been to, but uh, many people talk uh, also good about them. And also a lot of museums. So if you are into culture and nature, Chiang Mai is definitely your place. What about the overall livability and safety in Chiang Mai? Chiang Mai is considered a safe city for digital nomads and the travelers in general. And in fact, I never felt in danger, even alone as a girl. It's safe, has a vibrant culture it has a lot of food and a lot of movement everywhere about the cost of living we will talk after this point but it's definitely affordable there are plenty of co-working space and a great nightlife as well i would say if you can leave aside the beach vibe Chiang Mai has something for everyone we arrive at the cost of living so let's break down how much i spent in one month living in Chiang Mai i will read across from there because i have them here so for the apartment which you can see in my previous videos as well i spent 450 $50 per month and we were in two so let's say also divided two and the fact that I stay for more than a month we also had a huge discount by Airbnb transportation cost we spend $86 per month for a scooter which also we divided by two because we were in two and $15 for the few times that we took cabs because we had a scooter so we just went around with it Food cost, which was only for me, I spent in one month $450 for food and I never lower my budget for food. I mean, I eat everything from local to Western and I have to say that this is a very great budget because I literally eat anything I wanted. Co-working space, I spent $30. This because in the apartment we also had the Wi-Fi. So we end up often working to our apartment and we just went a few times to co-working space. So if you have an apartment, that's a good point to keep in mind. So the total that we spent for one month in Chiang Mai per person was $763. We divided the apartment of the scooter, remember. I think uh, this is a super affordable price to live in such a great apartment in a such amazing and vibrant city. And I also will say that you can live comfortably also with $800 or $1,200 per month, depending of course of your budget and your lifestyle. And also remember, if you are in two as a couple or a couple of friends, you will divide most of the expenses, which is always a big plus. So to answer the question, is Chan Mei word for digital nomad? After spending one month in this incredible city, I will say a big fat yes. If you would like to live in a small city with a lot of personality, a lot of temples, and a lot of outdoors adventure, Chiang Mai is definitely your place. Let me know below in the comment if you would like to come to Chiang Mai and check it out, or if you prefer the island vibe, and so maybe you're interested on how the life is in Kopangan for digital nomad, you can check out this video up here. As always, make sure to like and subscribe if you like this video, and if you're interested in full-time traveling, and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye-bye.